blood of uh, calves cannot be paid for the uh, blood of human beings. Because according to uh, uh, our understanding, wages for sin is death. So Adam and Eve uh, were supposed to die, completely die. But God had plan B. And even Adam and Eve, they put uh, skin upon them. It means sacrifices already started. First blood was shed before Cain killed the angel. Because to continue to live, Adam and Eve, blood needed to be shed on the uh, uh, ground. So they got skin uh, cloths and they were taught sacrifices. And after that, all nations knew what is uh, blood sacrifice. Okay. Yeah, but blood of uh, animals are not sufficient because, because it's uh, animals. So must be a sacrifice human, but sacrifice might be perfect. If you sinned at least once in your life, you will die for your own sin. So there must be at least one person who is perfect completely. And there was no nothing like that. So God had a plan to produce such a person. And to produce it, he needed to come himself on the earth like a human being. And Jesus, when he was on the earth, he acted as a human being, mostly, mostly. And when, and when he was on the cross, he died as a human being, not like God. And human blood was paid for human sin. And after that, he went to uh, hell, out of hell, and then God said, if you believe in Jesus Christ, what he did on the cross, I will accept you without any deeds, by pure faith. And he promised also, I'll, during, if you believe me, I'll change you. I'll give you new heart, new nature, all, everything what is satanic in our nature will be removed eventually, not now, because the process of salvation is not completed yet. When I come to heaven, uh, all, not my soul and my body will be completely changed, similar to Jesus, so, and I can be capable to be in presence of Holy God, uh, like Adam and uh, if before the fall, but uh, yeah, so is the major point of Jesus Christ. So the question that I was asking you, I mean, we believe Jesus was a Muslim in the sense that he has this recognition that he has a Lord, a God that he submits and surrenders to willingly and sincerely and worships that God. Then I asked you yeah. whether yeah. you believe similar things likewise about Christ. The point is, because on the earth, mm. Jesus acted mostly like a human being. He needed to submit himself as a human being to God, to be obedient to him, to the latest point. Mm. To the, and, uh, Otherwise, he couldn't be a sacrifice. And so when you say he submitted as a human being, yeah. did he know that he was other than a human being, more yes, than a human being? What was his understanding that who he was? He, at times you can see that he acted like God. Not action. What did he know or understand who he is? So there's something like what I do, by what I think what I am, right? So what did Jesus think while he was on this earth, who he was? Oh, there was plenty of uh, statements of Jesus Christ in the Bible. What does when, he refer? Well, you can see, for example, he said, I was before Abraham. So Pharisees uh, uh, condemned him. Uh, how can you do this? How can you say this? And etc. And he says, I am before Abraham. And I am, he said many times. And uh, in Hebrew. So, what does it mean, I am before Abraham? Yeah. What it does it mean? 
it means that he is God because the name of God in in, uh, in Jewish nature is I am. No, no. I when, am. It, when somebody says like, if I told you, I am before Abraham Lincoln. From my statement, I am before Abraham Lincoln. You would understand that I was before him while he was living, not that I am God. So if he said something like I am before Abraham, people would have understood that he was before the time of Abraham, not that he was God, because that's what the language implies, right? Why would you say that means like I am the prime minister or I am the king or I am God? Uh, how, how a human being born just 30 years ago can be before Abraham? Because God can, God can make someone at the very beginning even before they are born here, like Jeremiah and various others, God formed them, you know, before even the foundation of the world. You know, I'll give an example. You were in the loins of Adam, even before you came here, thousands of years after, you were already there. God knew you. God knew you. So it doesn't make you God just because you were there already. So when the Pharisees said, how can you meet? How can you say you met Abraham, you're not even 50 years old? Do you remember that? So th they didn't understand that he's saying I am God. They understood that you are not thousands of years old. Meaning that you were there at the time of Abraham or even before. You're only 50 years old, not even 50. So, so, the, so, the, con so the context to understand what Christ said and what Christ meant, we have to look at the context. His Opponents, the Pharisees, did not understand from that statement that he was God. They understood that he was pre-existent even before or at the time of Abraham. That's yeah, what the text says. Yeah, yeah. So now, but that doesn't... Many other people were even before. Okay. To give you another example, I'll but, give you another example. <coughs> Excuse me. Melchizedek. Melchizedek or Melchizedek. Melchizedek, according to Christian descent, is a Christ. Uh, but, it's not, uh, Christ. but it's not Christ, because the text of the New Testament says, Melchizedek, someone who had no father and no mother, no beginning of days, nor end of days, but as a priest who was the contemporary of Abraham. Who has no father, who has no mother, who was all the time, who? I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you. Only God. Uh, no, 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 no. Melchizedek, Melchizedek, had no mother, Jesus had a mother. So Jesus is not Melchizedek, according to the very statement that the New Testament writers are telling you. It is, it is an attempt to somehow make Jesus like that, but we now know the Melchizedek was contemporary of Abraham, and Abraham gave him one-tenth. Right, so if you study the New Testament text, you know that this is a separate individual. Jesus is believed by the Christians to be in the model, in the model of this Melchizedek. Not himself, but in the likeness, in that particular order of priesthood. So now we have an individual who was there without any beginning, no father, no mother. That person, according to... Only God has no, 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 no. father, that, no father. Do you worship Melchizedek? Actually, Melchizedek, it was Jesus who appeared. No, no, it's not Jesus, because... No, it's you, sir. No, it's not me, because... The Bible in the New Testament writing says because he has no father we, and no mother. We believe that Jesus is God. Okay. As God, he has no mother, no father, no beginning of the end. So, yeah. so, so you believe Melchizedek, Jesus is that Melchizedek? Yes. Okay. So let me try to understand again. Okay, that's one thing you said about what his self-perception was. What did you think he was? He said, before Abraham was, I am doesn't mean he was God. What did he say about him and God and that relationship? Did he say that I am that God that you are worshipping? Or did he, did he say, I am being sent by that God? What did he actually believe who he was? When it comes to talking about God. Okay, it's just point. This is because important. No, no, no. It's important what Jesus said about himself to understand who he is. Not what he said. I am. This is name of God. I am what? No, no. I am what? I am. When did he say I am? He didn't say I am. No, 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 no. Even a beggar said I am. Do you believe the beggar is God? Many times. So just because. So no, no. It's not pointless. Did Jesus say? 
that you shall have... For example, I can say Pharisees recognized they lived at the same time when Jesus and they crucified him because he said, they said, he stated that he is God. They, it, it was their um, verdict. It was a reason for him to be crucified. And you, because, uh, you accept that? They decided that he was God. Okay. But uh, in their understanding, he was a Do liar you... and etc. etc. So Do you accept so, the understanding is correct? From what from what they saw and understood everything what he was doing was claiming to be God. Do you accept their understanding is correct? And because they didn't believe it, they crucified him. But like do you do you heresy. accept they understood it correctly? But they and other people see that he was not all of them, of course, they saw that he's really a okay. God. Let me tell you what I understand and tell me if I'm wrong. I see that the, the same people saw Jesus as a madman, demon possessed. That's what the Bible says. Yes, of course. Right. Of course. And you accept that, that he was demon possessed? They. Not they. No, no, no. no. Do you accept no, no. it? Just a second. You don't accept? They understood that he, Jesus claimed to be God. No, no, that's and, not what I'm asking for. No, no. No. I'm uh, simply saying. No, just, they, just let me finish. Go ahead. They understood that Jesus claimed to be God, but because they believed that he is demon possessed, madman, they decided to crucify him. So, so they understood he was demon possessed, but you don't take their understanding seriously. I don't understand. That. Even though they understood Jesus was demon possessed. You don't take their understanding seriously. You say now, I dismiss their understanding. No, and I just, my point is that uh, from what he said, so from What he, did he say? From what he did. What did he do? They understood that he was claiming to be a God okay. in his mind. Let me tell you what you are missing from the New Testament. Um, maybe you see it there, but you don't see it. At one point, the same people came to stone Jesus for blasphemy. So you mere man, you make yourself equal to God, God, and you know, you're blaspheming. That was the real opportunity for Jesus to say, hear me clearly. I'm not just blaspheming, I am God. That's what you should accept. I'm not just claiming to be God, I am God. Please let me finish. Why should he not correct them he should tell them, of course I am God. That's not a blasphemy. You should worship me and so on. Listen to me, I am God. Instead, instead, do you know how he replied? I've read the passage. Do you remember? Right. He responded, said, for what works? What have I done that you're trying to stone me? That you say I'm blaspheming? And then he responded by saying, look, isn't it written in your law that you are called Elohim? And I only said I'm Ben Elion. That you are gods and I said I am a son of God and the scripture cannot be broken. I'm paraphrasing the whole story for you. So what he did is said, look, in your scripture, in the Torah, in the book of Psalms, there are passages in which God says to ordinary human beings, the judges, you are Elohim, sons of the Most High, but you'll die like men. So they know God himself has called those judges as Elohim. Elohim is the name of God, is God. Right, so he said, I didn't say I'm Elohim. I said I'm Ben Elion, the son of Elion, meaning son of God. So, oh no, no, let me, let me, let me make my point first of all to understand. So he refuted by saying, I didn't claim to be, a, be a God or Elohim. Even if I did, even if I did, that would not be a blasphemy. Point number one. Secondly, I only said I am the son of God. And why did he say that? Because the Jewish people, they believe any righteous person is a son of God. Ephraim is a son of God. David is a son of God and so on and so forth. So, so Jesus refuted them 
in their accusation that he claimed to be God, he, because that was an opportunity for him to make himself if clear. God, uh, they call themselves Sandals God, they, but they killed him yeah, yeah. because but, he claimed to be a son of God. Uh, like but that God. is not a claim to divinity. Even if you said, I am a son of God or a daughter of God, if that anyone, doesn't make you God. If anyone is son of God, what's the point to kill him? No, no. because his claim... Well, I'll tell you why they wanted to kill him. Let me just another example. No, no. I'm Russian. Before you go that, why did you want to kill him? Do you know why they wanted to kill him? It's important to understand that point. Because, first of all, it was God's plan. No, no. Why and did the, the Jewish people want to kill him? The was a people uh, who uh, uh, arranged this sacrifice. No, so no. it was God's plan for Jesus to That's be what you understand. That's pay, what you understand. Uh, he needed to pay the price for our sins. So human blood needs to be shed to pay for our sins. And Jewish nation was a like high priest who is killing uh, uh, sacrifice. So he said, first, We can come back to this point. But the reason they wanted to kill him because he came to destabilize the political order. He didn't want these Pharisees and the Sadducees and all these people to go about telling people what to believe, what not to believe. They become like gods on earth in terms of what they're saying to people. He came to tell them the spirit of the Torah. He told them what the Torah says and the spirit behind it that they should follow. At one point, remember, a woman came and says, okay, she should committed adultery, adultery. What did he say? Let anyone who has no sin be the first one to cast the stone, to stone her to death. The point is, he was a teacher sent by God to remind them of the Torah, to follow God, obey God and worship God. So, that's why I asked you, what was his... Sorry, sorry, can I, can I make... Uh, he came to two, two more points. To start a new year. Two more points. As he was going about Nazareth or Galilee, whatever area is going, do you know what people thought about who he is? What did people say he was? All kinds of Like? It does matter. It does. It's important. No, no, it's very important. Because if someone is God on earth, people should know that he's God on earth. But instead, when he went around healing the sick, the leper, yeah, the blind, yeah. no, no. What did people say about him? What Peter said about him? No, no, not Peter. Peter. What? Before you go into Peter, what did Peter say? Let's start with Peter. Son of God. It meant it meant God. No. A son, a son of God, as we have explained. Son of God is everyone. So what please, please. Son of God? If Peter said, if Peter said, son of God, you know what son of God means. There are many sons of God. The sons of God by the tons in the Bible. But in so, this context, it means God. Uh, we disagree, but I can tell you. And Thomas said, My God. No, he didn't stop there. He didn't say just my God. He says, My Lord. And my God. Right. Do you know who is. So, no, no, not anyway. Not, not anyway. Every anyway. single. This is a reaction of Thomas. When he went to the people, he says, Oh, okay, even according to uh, just look at Jesus, you cannot find no, anyone no, 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 no. like him. It is he important was born without sin. Everyone, Muhammad is sinful, everyone is sinful. Go, uh, Jesus is sinful. Just um, try he was born to. Without, uh, from God, by God intervention. Nobody is born by God. If you are sinless, does it make you God? He made a if you, if you are sinless, and he breathed the I can earth. I can see that you're going into several arguments so now. It's, it's, what, just one, slow down. Just, you need to be blind, not No, no, just slow down. You'll be surprised every single thing Even you say. If Karan said that God uh, is, uh, Jesus is God and you don't believe it. Do you want me to respond to what you just said? Because I know people who uh, read Karan. Would you, would you, would you like me to reply to what you just said? Because at least, at least hear the response. See, it's just like, uh, at least hear the response. So, we believe angels don't sin. It doesn't make them God. There will be hundreds and millions and zillions of gods there. Because there are many, many, many angels. They don't sin. So in our understanding, you would say they're all gods. But of course they're not. 
when a child is born, born sinless. It doesn't make them God. So, can I, can I, can I make you, my do, point? Do you need to learn a child to uh, do wrong thing? You don't need. He has a sinful nature. There's Every a difference child. between having a sin. Are you a terrorist? I have a child. No, are you a terrorist? Uh, every person who is born has sin no. in their nature. I want to make a point. Are you a terrorist that we can take you there and the MI5 can take you and, and, and put you behind bars and execute you? Are you a terrorist? No, I'm not. Are you? I'm not. Right. So you can't say every person is a terrorist or a sinner. You can only say there's a potential to do terrify and to commit terror. Look, let, can I can I finish my point, please? What you are saying is people have the potentiality to commit sin, commit terror, commit all these wrongdoings. Until they have done that, you cannot call them a sinner, you cannot call them a terrorist, you cannot call them a murderer. You cannot call him a murderer if he hasn't committed any murder. So you cannot call someone a sinner unless they have done a sin. A baby of one minute old. But they fought please, 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 please. When a baby is... Just listen. When a baby is just born, one second of birth, is that baby a sinner? He had a sinful That's nature. That's what I'm asking. He, he is not sinner. That's what I'm asking. Thank you. Right. Good. So you've answered. So you've answered. Children who died in so you've answered. They to heaven because they still haven't sinned. But they thought sinful. But, but you have answered though. The baby is not a sinner but has a sinful nature. Right. Good. So just because someone has a sinful nature doesn't mean that they are sinners. So let's go back to Jesus Christ. When he went to the people, the people were deceived, according to you, to think that he was a prophet of God, a mighty messenger of God, a miracle worker. Because Jesus deceived them to think that he was a prophet, that he was a messenger who was a miracle worker. Instead of saying, I'm God on earth. Imagine now, ima I was the king of England, for example, but I didn't tell you. You would say, oh, this, no, you should have told me that. No, can I, I, need to, I need to finish my point though. I will tell you why. I will tell you why he needs to. Just a second. I'm Russian. I can say, I'm a princess of Russia. You do you believe me? I would. No problem with that. But if you said you are God, I would not believe you. Do you know why? All, all dynasty of Russian uh, empress was completely eliminated by Russia. Sure. Yeah, but yeah, but you can be de a, de a dethroned princess. But Other people let me, need to confirm that I am but, but allow me to tell you why, why God needs to tell us that he is God worthy of our worship. Imagine, no, 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 it's not, no, no, please, let's try, it's very important. It's very important. If God did not tell us from the very beginning that He is our God and He requires, he said oh, please. I'm God can I, 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 can I make a point? No, I'm not interested in talking to you because it just. Why? Because I'm making sense? Oh, because it's like circling. What have I circled? Tell me. What have I said with the circle? I'm telling you that Isaiah told you that the son is given to you. What did Isaiah say? Authority on the point his shoulders. Okay. And? His, his name is God Eternal. God Eternal. His name is Prince of uh, Peace. Peace. Mm -hmm. He is God Almighty. It's Isaiah said. And you said it's nothing. It's just nothing. Did you ask me how I understand this verse? You can understand as you want. No, no, not as I want. Not as I want. The prophecy says he is God eternal. Can I? Okay, hear me out, hear me out. Yeah. Just, no, no. Because you brought, you see, if you bring something, at least try to hear the response. Because there may be a very cogent, sensible response to all of this. This Isaiah, when he said that, did the Jewish people think that there will be someone like that will be also God? Never. Because it is their book and they said 
that this doesn't refer to a God on earth. Because the person it's referred to, a son will be born, he shall be called the mighty God, the Prince of Peace, the government will be on his shoulders, the everlasting Father. Is Jesus the Son or the Father? Jesus, one being in three persons. No. You need to be consistent in what you bring. The Isaiah passage says, he shall be called. So, you see. Can I finish my point? No. Can I finish my point? No. Can I finish my point? And then you can have your response. Just like I let you speak, make a point, I'm responding. So, in, in, in counter response to what you said, in Isaiah it said, he shall be called. Jesus was not called by anyone everlasting father because in Christian theology he's not the everlasting father. He's the son. So it cannot refer to Jesus. He's God, so he's no, no. everlasting father as well. No, he's not. In your belief, there is everlasting father and there is the son. Right? Jesus is not the everlasting father. So you cannot make that heresy, this heretical mistake. You will be totally disowned by your church, whatever church you go to. Right? If you ever go to a church and you say that, they will say that you're not even a Christian. My point is, this Isaiah passage does not make anyone who is God, because for them, even a judge can be called God. Even a judge can have the government on their shoulders. So it doesn't mean the passage refers to an individual who is going to be worshipped as God on earth. So now let's return back again to what people said. And I, and I, want, to, I want to go back to the reason why... Please, Isaiah, I've already explained. No, it doesn't me now. How okay, tell me. It says, son is given to you. Mm -hmm. The same son is eternal God. How can it be son given to you and he's eternal God? How can it be? It's consistent. And you say, uh, it's me, inconsistent. No, it doesn't say eternal God. Eternal God, it says. <laughs> it says mighty God, El Gibor. Mighty God, right? Mighty God. For them, for them, a mighty God can also be a title of ordinary human beings. Like in Psalms 82, verse 6, where God is saying, You are Elohim, sons of the Most High. How can it be son at the same time, eternal God? You're just saying eternal. Can you show me the passage where it says eternal God? Then it will become clear. Yeah. While you're finding it, Jesus himself said, there is only one true God. And he didn't say that was him. Do you know, according to Jesus, who that one true God is? If God wants to be three persons in one? No, 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 no. Jesus Why identified, no. no, what I'm saying is, after all this discussion we are having, Jesus actually settled that dispute. Jesus said who the one true God is. Do you know? Jesus himself identified. Let's find Isaiah. And we'll come back to Jesus, what he said about this one true God. There are many translations I just chose. Okay, let's see your translation. Child is born, son is given, government is on his shoulders, his name is to be called the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. How some can be mighty God? Okay, stop. And, and stop, let, stop. Don't be finished. You don't give me a time. What do you think? How son can be called everlasting father. Sure. Keep it open. Keep it open. So now you got yourself corrected because you the passage that you read said mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father, the government on your shoulders. Just Plus. as I just as I said. So I quoted your Bible more accurately than you are misquoting the text. But it says son is given to One you. One second. You said and eternal God, which it doesn't. Of this son. Wait. Everlasting Can I? Father. Son, everlasting father. Please. Come. Remember, remember, you you argued with me. Do you remember? It says eternal God, which it doesn't. It doesn't say eternal God. 
So I corrected you and you have seen it yourself, you read it yourself and all of the people have heard, it doesn't say eternal God. It talks about everlasting father, which Jesus is never the everlasting father in any Christian theology. No, everlasting, Wait. it means eternal. His name will be, name. Who called Jesus everlasting father? No one. No one today calls him everlasting father either. So, Jesus settled the dispute who he was. He said, you should know that the, you should know that the eternal, the the, uh, the only true God is the Father. Did you know that? In John seventeen three, do you know? As I said you before. Excuse me. Can I can I settle the dispute between you and me? Because you're trying to. Twisted. I'm not and twisting I'm it. Not you were twisting it, and I showed you that you did the twisting, I, I and said, you were you, you were corrected. I said so, you before. Sorry. When Jesus came on earth. Excuse me. And he acted on earth as a human being. What did he say? Who the true God is? So in this case, he needed to submit to Father. He needed to pray to Father. That's not what he I'm asking. To get help from a. That's not what I'm asking, though. I am yes, saying, according because, to Jesus, because, who is the only true God? Let me ask you, who is the only true God according to you? The only true God, not just God, are, not true. Twisting, uh, I don't want to twist. I'm going to be very specific, very specific. Okay. According to you, who is the only true God? I just showed you, son given of us, he's the eternal God. And you said it's nothing, no? Okay. Just you just please. read it yourself. It doesn't say eternal God. And he went back Ever, again. Everlasting Father. No, his name will be called Everlasting Father. If my name is called Everlasting Father, does that make me God? Everlasting. In, uh, wait, wait. In if Bible, my name is called Everlasting Father. In Bible, every name had meaning. Every name of God had uh, um, revealed his nature. And it's not just... Blah. No, if... He, if if and, my and name is called Everlasting Father, would that make me God? If he said his name, Everlasting Father. No, if my he, name was Everlasting Father, would that make you God? It's not our argument. He said, I'm Everlasting Father. He didn't say it that. Jesus never identified himself as Everlasting Isaiah, Father. Isaiah said, about Isaiah said someone's name will be, right? So my question to you again is, to settle the dispute, let's see what Jesus Christ says who God is. According to your understanding, who is the only true God? Only true God. Not just God, not just true God, but the only true God. I'm praying to a true God who created Who is who is the who is the only true God that you're praying to? Who created the whole universe? Who created everything? Who is he? Who is he? Who is he? Who is he? True God? No, who is he? God is he the Holy Spirit? I don't just in, don't interrupt my prayer. But I don't want you to pray. I want, to I want you to answer my question rather than pray. Give us because your prayer is not going to help you answer the question. To help us to have a revelation and to give us clarity. I don't want to be deceived. You are deceived. You don't want to be deceived. But you are deceived though. I asked you a question no, to settle the dispute according to according to Jesus Christ who settled our dispute. Who is the only true God according to Jesus Christ? And I asked God to reveal himself to us in dreams, to come in visions. So you don't want to listen to Jesus what he said? He, she's not interested in what Jesus says, what because, Jesus said. You're interested in visions. We want to be in your presence in heaven. We don't want to go to hell. And who will be who will be God in heaven? And uh, because of it, everyone. Um, who will be God in heaven? This revelation. Who will be in God in heaven? And uh, God. You suddenly, know, suddenly, so you, you are not engaging anymore. Come to us. Okay. Reveal yourself. Show us to everyone who is here. So, according to Jesus Christ. According to Jesus Christ, brother, brother, excuse me. According to, according to, can I teach you something now? So now she's preaching. 
This is when the truth comes, this is the mode that we see Christians engage in. Because when you cannot respond, right? So according to Jesus Christ, let me, let me help you. Let me remove your confusion. Let me tell you the truth according to Jesus. I'm born again. Um, My name is written in the heaven. And according who's to the only the true Bible, God? Excuse me. I'm sitting in the... What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? In the, uh, What's your name? In, uh, heavenly place. What is your name? Jelena. Hmm? And I... Jelena. Jelena? Yeah. Jelena? So, and I, who is the uh, only true God? And Shall I tell you? God, and my God can It's the God of me. Jesus. I have conviction in my heart that I'm already saved. Yeah. Suddenly, why are you not listening to my question and answering it? He healed me, not on one no. occasion. Why you suddenly become like a robot and not listening and answering he my question? Helps me everyone. Why have you suddenly become a preacher? My son had depression and I prayed and, well. uh, and so God right. answered we all my are prayers. We are not talking about that. And are you depressed now? And he because free from no, no, are, you, are you depressed now? Because right. the truth has come to you. I saw Jesus said, he Jesus he said, the only true God is the one who call, he calls himself the God? Father. What does mean God? Salaamu Alaikum. You know what? I'm going to go. Jarina. Jarina, I'm going to, I'm going to go. Brother, brother. Uh, let's not have several discussions because as you can see, so instead of engaging with me, the question I asked, which settles the dispute, she is now engaging with everyone else apart from me. So, so, Jarina, Jarina. Don't uh, take part in uh, fruitless discussion. Fruitless discussion. In the day of judgment, I will be a witness against you. Okay. That I demonstrated that even from the testimony of Jesus Christ, the only true God is his God. The one who says, worship him only. Not Jesus Christ being the God, only true God. Jesus Christ is the one who's sent by the only true God. Just as I started with you in my discussion from the very beginning, I said Jesus was a Muslim. Jesus was indeed a Muslim who worshiped God. In the garden of Gethsemane, he fell down on his face, his foot on the ground, he worshiped God. Does he talk to you? Hmm? Does he talk to you? Does Jesus, can you hear does Jesus, your God voice? listen. Does he guide you? Yes, God guides me. No, I said, can, can you hear his voice? Yeah, every time I read the Quran, I hear God speaking no, to me. He can talk without, uh, not only for Quran. He can talk to you personally, not every situation. So, so let me ask Quran. you one thing. Do you worship Jesus or do you worship the God of Jesus? Last question, and then I leave. So, I worship my God. That's not my question. One. That's not is my, worship, that is not my question I though. I have a specific question. You worship God Jesus. Father. You're going to go to hell if you do. Whoever worships other than God, God has told himself that they will go to hell and they'll never come out of it. God is if you worship Jesus or Moses or Abraham or David or Muhammad or any, anyone else, Jesus. hellfire is your one-way ticket and you'll never come out. Jesus said, who follows me, Why your he will be in heaven. No, I'm telling you, if you worship other than God, and you worship the angels or human being, Jesus or Moses or Abraham, or even Muhammad, you will go to hell and you'll never come out of it. Even Quran says that this is extraordinary special. No, Quran says he's a slave and a servant of God. And God were to destroy Christ, no one will help him. Even Quran says that no, no one, no one like The Quran says, if Jesus. God were to destroy Christ and his mother, Muhammad. who is there to help them and save them? No Muhammad one. Muhammad was a sinful person. Oh, now you see? So now become person. character assassination. That Prophet so, Muhammad Muhammad. is sinful. Prophet Muhammad was not God. He was a servant of God. He's the messenger of God. Right? Jesus is my brother. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave with you, no hard feelings, no hard feelings, but in the day of judgment, you know that I will be a witness against you. I will be a witness against you that I gave you the message that Jesus himself said the only God that you should worship is the God in heaven, not himself. He said he was a agent of God, a man of God, a prophet of God, and yet you worshipped him. So Jesus will not help you in the day of judgment, and I will be a witness against you.
And the Bible says, if you don't believe in Jesus as God, you will be Why does it say that? What does it say that? You lied. You lied. What does it say that? You lied. What does it say that? We are all witnesses now. Let's see, let's see it. Why does it say that? Brother, don't say any word. Why does it say that? Excuse me, brother. Just look at me. Why does it say that? You just lied in front of the public and all the millions of people that were watching you. Why does it say that? That if you, you just she's finding it now. Let's see. Let's see. And we would demand a sincere apology for lying. Or maybe you were mistaken. I will take that. If you said, look, I, I mistake, mistook what the Bible said, I will accept it. Okay. Yeah. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that everyone believing into him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God didn't send his son into the world that he might judge the world, but the world might be saved through him. The one who believing unto him is not condemned, but the one who is not believing already been condemned for the, the for he has not believed into the name of only begotten son of God. And what did you claim earlier? Jesus is God. One second. What did you claim earlier and what are you producing as a supporting text? It doesn't support what you said. What did you claim? Do you remember? You can watch the videos. Look, so many channels are recording this. Yeah? So at least apologize to the people that you you were mistaken. Apologize. That is the, the minimum thing you should do. Say, I'm sorry, I misunderstood what, what, what I was claiming. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world. It's Jesus. And man loved the darkness more than It doesn't support what you claim. Jesus. And their works were evil. What did Jesus say who you should worship? One final question. According to Jesus, who should you worship? Because Jesus never said worship me. He says worship the one who is in heaven. Oh, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. That's the Lord's prayer. And these Christians, self-delusion. Into self-delusion. Thinking what they read is what it says. But in fact, they are deceived by Satan in thinking that Jesus himself taught them that. In fact, Jesus said, no, you should worship him and him should you serve only. Who was he referring to? The God on heaven. Whose will be done? Whose kingdom come? The God in heaven. So Jesus never said, I am God and worship me and worship, you know, me as God or whatever. So how are we going to let our Christian friends, because the discussion was with the Christian lady, to understand this, this delusion they're in, they have to look and look after and care for their own souls. Because if your own soul is deceiving you, I cannot help you. But be sure that I will be a witness against you. All the people here will be a witness against you in the Day of Judgment. Because we have made clear the message to you about the only God worthy of worship was the God of Jesus and Jesus was a messenger, a prophet of God. And we have made a hujja against you. We have made a hujja and evidence against you in your belief that Jesus is God when we demonstrated it's the opposite. Jesus has a God which he submitted and surrendered to, making him a Muslim. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I want to say salam alaikum. Seven years old, seven years ago, I watched your video and my dream to meet you. And heaven. <laughs> How are you? Good. My name is Farhan. I'm from Saudi Arabia. Anytime you come, I will say for you, I will come to you. Because I know that all my family, all of us, watch all your videos and all of us, and all of us, 
and uh, every time I go on TV, watch your video about me, every day, every single day, I want, I want to sleep for three hours. There is a lot of